AI in arts is real and it's not going anywhere. All the stuff that you're seeing is made by the new OpenAI video model, Sora. It is a text-to-video AI model. You write something you want to see, a prompt, and the model creates the videos. The results are stunning. Not long ago, the Writers Guild went on strike. Seeing that their options to survive in the near future are being reduced because of the AI threat and not feeling protected by the industry they serve. With these new realistic AI video generator tools in the horizon, now is the time for videographers, oceanographers, drone pilots, production companies, cameras, lens, gear, animators, commercials, stock footage companies, etc. to be on guard. The first video we saw a few weeks ago about Sora were really impressive, but this is another level. This reveal shake the whole industry again, and in a few weeks or months it will shake the whole society. We are living in a hyper-interesting moment in history, where big unshakable names in our mental imaginary, like Hollywood, could disappear or drastically change. Tyler Perry, a world-renowned producer, director, actor, scriptwriter, etc., was creating an 800 million film studio, and when this model released, he cancelled it. Sam Alman, the CEO of OpenAI, is having meetings with Hollywood people. They know that this technology will expand like wildfire, and they are trying to champion this new art paradigm. They reached a bunch of artists to try out this new tool. These are the results. Okay, so here we are. This is the blog that OpenAI released uh, a couple of days ago, Sora, and the first impressions. So here are some examples of artists' works and uh, phrases that's how they say Sora. Sora is at its most powerful when you're not replicating the old, but bringing to life new and impossible ideas we would have otherwise never had the opportunity to see. What excites us is its ability to make things that are t totally surreal. For example, the director Paul Trillo is a multidisciplinary artist, writer and director whose work has earned accolades from outlets like Rolling Stones and The New Yorker. Let's see what he did with this. I mean, if somebody would uh, have told us that this is AI and we weren't looking for the mistakes, etc. Like, for example, we can see here that this is not, uh, well, it could be like, a, I don't know, a faraway country. But my point is that we wouldn't know that this is made by AI. Look at the, all the reflections how it responds to this light and how it reflects in this kind of like, I don't know what is this, but it seems like metal, close. If this didn't blow your mind, is I don't know what to tell you. First of all, I seriously would tell you that this could have been recorded with a special film or camera lenses that make this kind of like raw um, sensation. I would have told you that this was real. And then in post-production, they've made some kind of effects that make it feel more surreal. But the main raw footage was real. We can see how this is a very, let's see, violent and fast movement. But this doesn't translate in deformed objects or deformed perspectives. Look at how all the color palettes make um, a realistic sense. The movement blur of the camera. This already reminds me of a TV show called Love, Death and Robots from Netflix, where they experiment with VFX, CGI, 
animation, etc., to to tell very visual impacting stories. And this could even be one of the episodes. <laughs> I think that it respects very well the feel of anamorphic film. The motion blur seems totally believable for me. And again, of course, if we start looking for the mistakes, we're going to find them. But I don't think that this is the way to look at this. One year ago, we were seeing these crazy AI videos of Will Smith eating spaghetti, and now and now it's this. So imagine if the rate of advancements continue continues being exponential. What are we going to see in one year? Working with Sora is the first time I felt unchained as a filmmaker. Not restricted by time, money, or other people's permissions. We go down Nick Cleveroff, creative director, native foreign. He's an Emmy-nominated creative agency from Los Angeles, and he's been playing with it. Let's see what we can see here. The levels of realism, um, they're starting to be very, very, very exciting. Look at how the camera follows the the main character. How blurred is the background. Look at how like the cinematic lighting here, here, and this like works in movement. Look at how cool this like surreal. I would really say that this looks very realistic. Look at the light. We'll see this new era of surrealism exploding. It's literally hypnotizing. How is this going to change commercials, advertisement? I really think that we're going to start seeing more, I don't know, Dalis, Buñuels, um, people creating this crazy stuff, surreal stuff, to try to find some kind of meaning in this craziness that we're living in. Oh my god. Nick Cleveroff talks about how to how to visualize concepts and rapidly iterate. Then we have August Camp, artist and musician. So there's going to be a kind of more. So what we have here is kind of like a more um, music video vibe. When I see these videos, I see a new era of music videos. I used to create music videos before I started this this YouTube adventure and music video productions are a very expensive industry. It's very difficult to do. Musicians normally don't have the amount of money that doing something like this requires and this will open a lot of doors to people to be able to express themselves and create amazing, amazing stuff. We will hopefully start seeing more Chris Cunninghams. Joseph Miller, creative director, co-founder and creative director of London-based ORR Studio specializing in the design of 3D visuals, augmented reality, and digital fashion. What we got here? Look at the high quality of the designs of the video, how the video feels. Like the reflections under the water, like the water physics have always been very, very tricky to replicate. And look at this. Right here, the reflections, the amount of free of creative freedom that you will have to like do whatever, whatever you have in your mind. It's kind of crazy if you think about it like this. Whatever you have in your mind, you will be able to create it. Let me stop this. So this is kind of like a fake, uncanny, strange animals documentary. Um. But look at this. Okay, you can say that it's not real because of what you're seeing. But dude, it looks very, very real. It's not that it looks very real. It's like, look at the movements how the camera tracks and follows the animals. The physics of it.
look at the how it casts the shadows just right here I mean the animation itself how it moves the light the long lenses used mimicking a documentary style that's my favorite And there's a book that I read a long time ago um, about horror, and one of the things that is very interesting is that when you blend two real worlds, meaning this is a fox that should be at ground level, walking, um, that is acting like a bird, something that is from the realm of the air, and it really looks very real, even though our minds cannot understand what they're seeing. And this creates like a feeling of uncanniness. I cannot even start imagining how the horror genre is going to be able to use this uncanniness and this and this blurness in the limit of reality and the unreal. Well, I think that this is what makes horror big. But anyway, Don Allen Stevenson, as I was saying, as I was saying, I think that the weirdness has its greatest strength. Look out, horror fans are horror creators. It's not bound by traditional laws of physics or conventions of thought. Working with Sora shifted his focus from technical hurdles to pu pure creativity, unlocking a world of instant visualization and rapid prototyping. It, it allows me to focus more of my time and energy in the right places. And the last one that I wanted to show you, actually it's the first one, and there is a multimedia production company called Shy Kids that used Sora for um, a short film. These shots right here, they're ultra cinematic with a multi scale in here and here, the depth of field, the movement. This is another super cinematic shot. Look at the movement, look at the reflection of the lights, look at the color of the lights. It really looks like a real shot. Continuity between takes, grain film look. I mean, the reflections, the consistency between frames, the amount of realism, the detail, continuity of objects. Only big production companies have the money to produce stuff like this. Now, a kid can do it. And I think that this is fascinating. I really want to see what others can create with this if there's no limitations. People with good stories, now they have in their hands a lot of tools that will make them thrive, that will make them enter into this creative state and have fun with it. That is like a very difficult thing when you don't have the ability to, I don't know, create something because of constrictions like money, time, people, um, help, etc. Now it's going to be literally having fun. I do think that Hollywood has a problem. Their assembly line blockbusters will be able to be replicated with AI tools in a matter of years. Add to the equation that the current Hollywood's quality level of creativity is going down in my opinion, with the focus on remakes and low quality ideas. And they will have to be competing against a new competitor, the surreal and digital wave that these new technologies are introducing. On the other hand, movies like Dune 2 or Oppenheimer are going to be difficult to replicate with AI, because they're looking for realism with their use of practical effects, with Nolan and Villeneuve championing this movement against the Marvel-style movie look. We're going to start seeing a big differentiation between the search of realism and a new surreal wave. In front of this explosion of digital creative capabilities, Documentaries of real human experiences are going to be in demand. Good stories and amazing art creations will flow to the top regardless of their geographical area, the money they have, their connections. They won't have to run their ideas by some committee. They'll just be able to produce incredible stunning visuals and share it with the rest of the world. There's not going to be restrictions by time, money, locations, people, teams, etc. Only your limitations of your imagination. You will be able to iterate quickly. Rendering time is going to be cut so much. The ability to visualize your ideas. I know a lot of film industry workers that are really frustrated with the constraints of the industry. You have to know people, have contacts, money. There is a lot of pressure and time involved in producing projects. But this technology could be a blessing for some if we adapt it with the right mindset. It seems like the new frontier is going to be converting these videos into 3D models or games, or virtual reality videos. These 2D spaces will be translated into 3D spaces, allowing filmmakers to have more control in where to put the camera, lights, objects, etc. 
What is the future of video games? Create renderings at real time like this? Look at this car. There are no going to be boundaries in the open world video games. Is that what a world simulation means? Questions that come to mind. What's going to happen with deep fakes? What is reality and what is not? The loss of belief in society. How is distribution going to look like? With this vast amount of new audiovisual projects, movies, etc. that will be created. How are we going to monetize these projects? I am a person that is using AI and integrating it in my life and job. I'm thinking about AI and the future all day long and this is what this channel is about. We are all in this new wave of change and nobody has the right answer. What can we do about it? Adapt and see that not everything is lost. In big history moments of change, like the one we're living now, people start to freak out, and for good reason. It looks very scary, because our lives will potentially experience a tectonic shake, and fast adaptability is going to be our only hope. I don't think we have another option if we want to continue in this artistic route. What are the skills I should have to take advantage of this era? Even if you don't have anything to do with the cinema industry, understanding storytelling and human nature is going to be an indispensable skill to adopt. Being able to articulate your vision, communication skills, the ability to show yourself, convince somebody, sell something, with knowledge of marketing and entrepreneurship, I really do think that all of these skills are going to be very, very useful in the new era. It feels like we're getting used to the new changes very, very fast. But then, every other week, something comes that makes our minds explode. This happened in the AI video realm a few weeks ago with Sora, and now in AI video music with Suno. That, my friends, sounds like our new reality. How can we keep up with all these advancements? Adaptability, positive mindset, curiosity, and being proactive. We will need to develop the capacity to reinvent ourselves and adapt in face of big changes that will come every couple of years, months, or weeks. Everything is changing pretty, pretty fast. Let's try to be optimistic about the future and enjoy the ride as much as we can. Because what is the other option? Click the subscribe button and give this video a like. Well, we could start burning AI to the ground and clicking the next video to see the AI witch hunt that is going on currently. Thank you so much for your time and stay kind.